Good morning. It's always nice to stand here and speak the word of God. If you are new here, I am Nani Kasongo. I'm assistant pastor, and I'm so happy to be here this morning. So we are going to continue with our series, More Precious Than Gold. So before that, uh, if you were not there the first Sunday when we started, and the second Sunday, I would like to do a recap so that uh, we can uh, be on the same page. So for the first Sunday, we had Joshua, an excellent preacher, uh, who preached uh, uh, from uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, um, verse 1 up to 12. I'll, I'm trying to work out this. Stevens? Yes, yes, so, uh, so we um, are going to do a recap, so one, um, there's something wrong there, oh my god, is it this working? Or? It is working, I'm not touching it, just press it once, once yeah. and wait. Okay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Am I now, okay, I think I'm missing something. Anyway, I missed I miss something there. Okay, um, technology is always like that. Uh, so Joshua uh, focus on uh, uh, hope. He said that uh, hope is universal. Each category of people, they got a different hope. And he also took about the biblical hope, uh, which is our insurance and also confident. Then he said, God is, our, God is the master of our hope. So we found our hope in Christ, Jesus. So the second Sunday we had Martin spoke from 1 Peter chapter 1. So he just continued what, where Joshua left. So verse 18 to 25. And Martin focused the message on a very important question. How shall we live? Then we live in hope. That was the first point. Be ready to stand for your faith. Then the second point was live in holiness. Be holy as God is holy. We need to say no to the old life and say yes to the new life. Then he said, the last point he talked about is Live in love. Love, live in the true love. And we need to choose to love like God loves us. So imagine today then we are coming up with, uh, um, again, try to work out this. We are coming up with uh, living as God is chosen people. We are going to focus the message on this, living as God is chosen people. We are now in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. We are going to read. So, put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like a newborn infant, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourself, like a living stone, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, 
to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in the scripture, Behold, I am laying in a Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and the rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the weight as they were designed to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people from his, pos pos uh, pos uh, people from his own possession, that, uh, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you are not receive mercy, but now you are receive mercy. Behold, I heard you as a sojourner and exile to abstain from the passions of flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the gentles honorable, so that when they speak against you as they evil does, they may see your good deeds and glorify uh, God on uh, the day of visitation. This is uh, uh, the letter coming from Peter. And this passage is, um, the passage is very uh, clear, speaking on the co-identity uh, in Christ and how we are called to live as uh, his chosen people. Peter wrote this, um, yeah, Peter wrote this uh, uh, letter to Christians live in Asia on the time of difficulties, time of persecutions. This letter encouraged them and the entire Christian church to hold on on the faith and to not giving up. Today, this letter is a powerful remind, remind, reminding us that no matter challenges, difficulties or problem, we are called to live in faith and shine Christ's light. Peter's message was addressed to Christians who have already received Christ as their Lord and Savior and also receive the gift of salvation but long for pure spiritual food to help them grow in salvation. So, the question that we are trying to answer this morning is, what shall we do to live as a chosen, uh, to live as God's chosen people? What shall we do to live as a God's chosen people? Peter shows that there is uh, a personal responsibilities each of us we have to do, we have to fulfill. So we are going to go with four points today. The first one is uh, get rid of the old life. And the second one will be grow up into salvation. The third will be uh, being built into a spiritual house with Christ as a cornerstone. And the last one will be be the witness in the world. So the first one. Get rid of the old life. As you can see the picture on the screen there, it, this is a man walking in a muddy field after a long day of walking. Surely this man will go back home and clean and wear a new cloth. I don't think you are expecting this man after a bath or shower to go back to his muddy, dirty clothing. This is what our life is. This is what our life was. We were living a dirty life, doing wrong to each other, but by the grace of God, we receive a new life in Christ by accepting Jesus as a Lord and Savior. 
His blood clean up our sins and our wrongdoings so that we can be acceptable in God's presence. We must understand that the new life in Christ comes with responsibilities and that God is calling us to fulfill them. Today God is saying get rid of certain behaviors that they are incompatible with this new life. Peter later mentioned some characteristic, but not all, that a child, a child of God must have. If you read the first verse, we have the word malice. And this word often translated from a Greek word that includes all evil, you can see that, that includes all evil of all kinds. The words Peter used here again is a deceit, translated as a lying, mislending, or distorting the truth. This word is often associated with the, um, the story that you may all know is Ananias and Sapphira. They deceived the old spirit when they lie about the money they get after selling their properties. So the way we have here again is a hypocrisy, pretending to be what we are not. And Jesus himself accused religion leaders at that time to be hypocrite because they were saying things that they were not doing. And God is said, this should not be among us. We should not be preaching love, but we don't show the love. We should not ask him for mercy if we can't give mercy. So this is a just reminder. And we got another word is envy or jealousies. This is mean that hating others because they possess something we don't have. You don't like that neighbor because he's the first one to buy an electric car. Sometimes that colleague, he was promoted before you. Sometimes that guy, he always possesses everything that you wanted to have. And you are jealous and you hate. Slander. Often is using as a insulting languages that a Christian should not have. And because this does not reflect the character of God. Now, it is uh, our responsibility. All he has is on us to get rid of these things because it is incompatible with the new life we have in Christ. We are going to move to, it, to our second point, is grow up into salvation. We live in a world that shifts in many directions. It will be difficult for us, as God's chosen people, to get rid of the old life if we don't grow in our faith. Christian's life needs nourishment, as we can see the milk there. We need to uh, to feed our, ourselves with uh, spiritual food. We got uh, the food that feed our body, then we have the food that feed our spirit. spirit. There will be a time when I was in Brazil as a missionary. I just um, decided to be healthy as possible and strong. So what I was doing, I was, uh, I was not eating anything that there is a sugar. And I was going to the gym twice a week and playing football every weekend. When my wife met me, she said, you, are, you were the strongest and the healthy young man I ever seen. But to reach that stage, I work hard. 
it was a great discipline. You go to the party, Brazilian, Brazilian people love uh, cakes, they love sugar, so you can't enjoy that beautiful cake because there's a sugar inside. A discipline, a life of discipline, choosing what food to eat to keep your body healthy. It's not the case now, now I can eat everything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even go to the gym anymore. The last time we played football uh, with the uh, young, the club, youth, I, I, I was like, oh my God, I, I need to start playing again. Where's Hilary? Hilary was saying, Anania, you okay? I was saying, yes, I'm okay. It was difficult. So the same effort sometimes we put to feed our body should be the same effort to feed our spirit. Because once you pick up a good food for your spirit and your spirit becomes strong and wealthy and mature. It is very important for us to grow spiritual growth. And this spiritual growth is by being in contact with the truth. And we all know that the truth is Jesus Christ. As John says, as he said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, I think we, we all know this verse. I am the way and the truth and the life. So to be a mature Christian, a Christian, we must crave for that truth, for that spiritual milk. So I will say to you today, the most delicious food comes from the kitchen without microwave. You may agree with me or not. <laughs> so the kitchen without microwave, that means everything is cooked from scratch. So it is important to be in the community with a strong biblical focus like this one, ABC. With this strong biblical focus, it's giving you a food that is cooked from the scratch and delicious to help you grow in the spirit. And we must grave for that food. A couple of years ago, Christian gatherings was attracted to many people when we had a crusade, many people were coming. In Africa, we had festivals, and we had those great evangelists, Renard Bonke, I don't know if you know Renard Bonke, who gathered millions of people, not for parties, drinking, and playing and dancing, but to hear the word of God and worship Jesus. My first time to participate in a festival, it was a Christian festival. Worship and hear the word of God. But now when we talk about festival, is a great musician that is going to play a song and they sell beers and people drink and dance nothing to do with Christians. And we see how those Olympics game gather millions of people from everywhere, but just to worship Satan, not God. So Christian gathering, it doesn't really attract people now. So we must ask God to renew that desire in our hearts. So we're going to move to our uh, following point is being built into a spiritual house with Christ as a cornerstone. Now, when you read this, then you see that Peter is now pro portraying the beautiful picture of the church by describing Jesus as the living stone and then as the cornerstone. So, Cornerstone. In an ancient, ancient construction, the cornerstone was the face stone, 
and the most important stone to lay. It determined the alignment of the structure of the entire building. If the cornerstone was mislaid, the entire structure could be weak and unstable. Therefore, that stone was a critical for the strength and the integrity of the building. Peter found this metaphor not from his experience, because we all know Peter was a fisherman. Uh, was a fish. Was a fisherman. A fisherman, yes. Was what well, that was his experience to go and fish. But how could you use this metaphor for building? Because he found this from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 26, verse 16. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Christ is our cornerstone. It's the foundation of our faith, the values and the characters. Christ is the living stone, the stone of the Christian church on which everything rests. For us as believers, for us who believe, for us who accept that, our life is built on that foundation. You know, when you see the structure of a building, it is just a stone after stone. They all coming together to form that structures. It's the same as the body of Christ. Individual believers come together from, to form that uni united body of Christ. That united body of Christ we form together, we worship, we serve, and we glorify God. And this is what we call the church. The church must be a place where Christians stand together in anything. We stand together in prayer. We stand together in love, in mercy, and in any other things, we support each other. As you know, no stone can stand on its own. If you go to your, to your house and you find one of a stone coming from your building, what you do? You take it out, it's, it's out of, from your hole. So what if you do? You throw it away, you put it back. You put it back because it's part of that structure. This is the church we do. This is what we should do. One of the stone, one of the believers going away, we as a church, we put back that stone. It's part of us. Amen. No Christian can live out their faith in isolation. No. You can't be a Christian and say, okay, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church, I, go, I don't go to the Bible study, I don't go to any Christian event, but I am a Christian. You must be into that structure. This is where you find strength, and your spiritual growth is dependent on those. Um, place where the word of God is preached and where people testify the glory of God. So, to finish this point and move to the last point, we must recognize that our identity, it is in Christ. We are a chosen, a royal, a holy, and special to God. 
we must also remember that we have been called out of the darkness into light. It's not just for ourselves, but to proclaim his goodness in the world, to witness God everywhere. Martin spoke about um, stand for the faith, speaking, be strong, and defend your faith. We must be the witness in the world. This is our last point. Be the witness in the world. We are living in the world that is shifting from good to bad. There is a lot of problem. There's a hate everywhere, conflict and war. You open your TV today, you see Gaza. You see the name like uh, Hezbollah. You see like uh, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, uh, Israel. It's not about people going and dance and giving food. No, it's about killing each other. The war, the chaos. We are living in the world with uh, the system is, f is very complicated and is very evil. The human life does not have any value. Politicians are taking power with an agenda to destroy the value of the family. We are living in this society. As a Christians, with our new life, we must understand that we don't belong to this fallen world system. We are exiles. We are foreigners in this world. This doesn't mean that we have to live in isolation. We have to say, okay, this is a Christian neighborhood. No one can enter. Only Christians. No. We live among everyone. But we must not be like everyone. We must show a difference. Because we caught a new life which comes with a package of love, of mercy. We must display those values so that other people, they can come to us. When there is a, a when there is an absence of light, there is a complete darkness. But when there is a light, the darkness disappears. Each one of us, we are a lamp everywhere we are. A school, job, neighborhood, and family, we must display that. We must show that light that we have in us. But it is, we must remind, remember that to be different to the others, we must abstain from sinful desires. We must say no to those things that they are not worthy for our soul. Peter said, the world may accuse you, but the values that you display as a Christian will speak on your behalf. As a Christian, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. This is you find in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on the hill cannot be hidden. This is what we are. When the tackle, the world becomes, the more brightly even a single light shines. Don't compromise. Don't, 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 don't leave anything to corrupt your mind. 
Don't let the dark to invent your light. You must stand strong. You must show holiness, love. And your light must draw people to Christ. Sometimes even they don't understand us. One day I was, one day I was speaking with uh, somebody who's a friend, he's a into business. He told me that, uh, what are you doing? Then I was saying, I am doing my master's degree in uh, divinity. Then he asked, what is that? Then I said, no, it's something to do with churches. I said, okay. Then I, I am assistant pastor at this church. I said, okay. We knew each other for a long time. We went to school together. And he knows that we spend time of studying and doing a lot of training. But him, he chose a business side. And then he told me, what are you getting from that? Because he's not a Christian, I understand him. He said, what are you getting from that? I say, I get life, eternal life. I'm happy, I love it. I feel so strong in it. Then I told him, what are you getting from what you do? I get a car, I get a house, I get money, I can travel, I can, I can be respected. Then I say, this is for your life. What about for your spirit? What are you getting from your spirit? Then he said, Pastor, if I need you, I'll call you so you can pray for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes they don't understand us. Sometimes they don't understand because they don't know. But they have to know if we share the truth if we share the good news. That's why we call it the good news of Jesus Christ. When people receive it, it transforms their lives. It makes them to be a new person. We must stand with a faith. We must proclaim the truth. As Peter reminds us, he said, we are a chosen people called to put off all our old lives. We are not special in that way that we did not uh, come from that old life. We have things that we did in the past. We came from that. By the grace of God, we receive this in your life. And we must now grow in Christ and live as is witness in the world so that other people also they can receive the same grace and be as us. We must all of us gather together as a structure in the church, reminding that Christ is our cornerstone and the foundation of our faith. We are all be built into that spiritual house. We need to be together in this journey. Amen. Amen. Let us close in prayer now. Asking God to help us live as his chosen people. We know that it's difficult in this world, but we have to be the light in this period. Let us pray. Every Father, thank you for choosing us to be your people. Help us to lay aside anything that holds us back from fulfilling this. Let our spirits nourish from your words and empower us to live as a royal priesthood. 
reflecting your glory in all that we do. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we say, Amen. Amen.